um, like I was saying, I think it's so important to, um, to know the schemes of the enemy. Ephesians 6, 11 says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Um, 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Um, and so I think it's so important. And today I'm going to talk about um, a spirit of intimidation. And um, I know so many women who've been abused. Um, and so I'm not talking about somebody in your life who is intimidating you. This is more, um, though I do believe a spirit of intimidation is behind that person doing that to you. This is more um, for your personal struggle, the enemy messing with your mind. Okay. Um, and we've been talking a lot about anxiety and a spirit of fear um, and how his word says, do not fear, do not be anxious. It's, it's very clear. It's not okay to have anxiety in our lives. Um, he, if he's going to command us to do it, he's going to give us the victory over it. Um, so I'd like to continue talking about a spirit of fear, but from a different angle. And I want to share experience that I've had, um, that has its root in fear and, and it's a spirit of intimidation. And as I've stepped out into this new season, um, being able to take care of the elderly, um, the Lord has just revealed a lot of like hidden fears in me and intimidation. Um, and now if you know me, I am bold in many ways. I'm sure we all have our areas we're bold in and then areas that we're a bit more timid in. But, but, um, like when we started serving downtown three years ago or whatever it was, I had no fear being down there. I had no fear, um, over dealing with some really rough and rude and crude people. Um, all through COVID, like I refused to wear a mask, um, and unless we were really required by the guy we worked with, because, I wanted those people to see my face. I wasn't afraid of COVID. I'm like right up in their face and they're spitting on me while they're talking because they're usually drunk. And, um, you know, so I had no fear with that. Um, some of the guys that are down there, most of them are nice, but we get some really tough gang guys down there. No fear. Um, one time there was a man who was assumed to be dead and I just, I, I'm, I just rush right in to see if I can help. He actually had passed away, but it didn't stop me from running right up, putting my hands. Maybe Jesus wanted to resurrect him. I don't know. I was willing. Um, and so, you know, I have no fear in the grocery store um, talking to perfect strangers about Jesus. And so I have no fear sharing my faith, um, you know, just so much more. So it seemed really unusual to me that I was very intimidated and afraid of taking this step. Um now, the first clue that it was <clears throat> the enemy, you know, it, that was my first clue, that it was an attack because it's not me. I'm a jump off the cliff type of person without thinking. Yeah, I had so much trepidation. Um, but we have to remember this is a spiritual battle. Um, I Part of the anxiety was would I physically be able to do this job? Okay, God called me to it and I'm afraid if I can physically do it. I mean, that sounds crazy, but there was so much fear around that or even mentally or with my mind being able to comprehend all the things I needed to learn. I needed to learn so much and I'm still learning so much. Um, and, and these people's lives at times are in my hands. Okay. That's, that's pretty intimidating. Um, so I've really recognized and repented of a lot of these things. And last night I was talking to my daughter before I went to bed about an incident that happened at work. She works there too. And just this panic, like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't have known what to do. I didn't know you're supposed to do X, Y, and Z. And I just felt woefully unprepared. And I went to bed kind of in a panic. And I was up. Okay, let me just say, I'm never alone at work. There's always somebody who knows more than I do. And one phone call away is help. Okay, they're incredible, incredible people to work with. So there is no reason to fear, um, apart from having God. Um but I proceeded to have dreams all night long. I was tormented all night of not being able to do my job, not remembering things, forgetting to take care of people. I tossed and turned all night. Um, and then at one point, the last dream I remember, um, there were two people that I hugged and I'm not sure how relevant who they were, but what was so noticeable in a dream was that they were so big and I was so small. And when I woke up, I felt like the Lord said, do you see that this fear is tormenting you? and that you are as grasshoppers in your own mind. 
you see yourself so small and you forget the big God inside of you. So that was kind of eye opening. I, like I said, I, I feel like I recognize the fear, but he, I feel like he gave me those dreams last night. I really do. I believe all dreams are from the Lord. And he really used that to open my eyes, to magnify how this fear is just tormenting me. And so, um, I just want to share a few things as I was studying out this morning, um, intimidation, um, intimidation means to frighten or overawe, especially to make, um, make them do what one wants to frighten them into submission and a sense of inferiority. Okay. That's how I have felt. Intimidation can silence you. Um, I was reading about David and Goliath in first Samuel 17th and David's response to the, to Goliath was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who should defy the armies of the living God, right? Like that was David's bold stance. And I feel like Goliath is like the epitome of a spirit of intimidation, right? He was big and he was trying to intimidate the armies of Israel. And so, you know, I'm just asking, what are the Goliaths in our lives? And if you're like me, um, before the last month or so, you may not have thought you had any um, until the Lord puts you in a place that's outside your comfort zone. So maybe you don't see it. Maybe you need to ask him to show you if there's just this spirit of fear hiding somewhere inside um, a spirit of intimidation causes you to make decisions out of fear or it holds you back and puts limits on you, right? Like if you're intimidated to do something, like I could have just said, you know, I can't do this. This is too big for me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, you know, strong enough, whatever it is. And it would have kept me out of what the Lord has for me. It, so it prevents you from stepping into the fullness of God's plans for your life, um, that lack of boldness or that timidity or the spirit of intimidation in our lives may very well keep us from speaking out, speaking the gospel to people, praying for people, seeing people set free. Um, it causes us to miss out on all that God has for us. It's a harassing spirit. It frightens you in such a way that it makes you do something you don't want to do or it stops you from doing what you're called to do. Um, a spirit of intimidation brainwashes you. You completely lose sight of your identity and your authority. These last several weeks, I have been battling with my identity and my authority. I have authority over this spirit of intimidation, this spirit of fear, but I was living under it. Um, I am a child of, of God, most high, like greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. I have nothing to fear. He called me to this. He will equip me to this. So um, your identity and your authority. It robs you of boldness. It robs us of doing great exploits for God. It robs us of peace and joy. Um, and it tells you the opposite of what God tells you, um, that you're inadequate, you're unworthy, that you'll fail in this gift or ministry or whatever it is that he's calling you to. And so I just wanted to just kind of like peel the curtain back a little bit um, and reveal the spirit of intimidation and um, I'm going to pray for us that God would reveal it. And like I said, for me, it didn't manifest until I started to step out in my calling, um, in a different way. So, um, first, uh, Peter five, eight, nine says to be alert, sober minded, your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, resist him standing firm in the faith. Okay. There's an enemy looking to take us out right? He can't take us out of the kingdom anymore, but he can handicap us with the spirit of intimidation. He can keep our mouth shut. He can keep our heads down, just this timid, afraid um, spirit. And that's not of God. So I'm going to go ahead and pray um, over us. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you reveal, Lord, and you reveal to heal. And so, Father, I pray for each one of us, Lord, that I, I believe you want us free, Lord. You want us walking in your freedom, in boldness, in being courageous, Lord. Um, and I just pray, Lord, that if any of us is dealing with a spirit of intimidation in any way that is keeping us from living fully for you, for fulfilling, for fulfilling our call, Lord, the destiny that you have over our lives, Lord, if there's any limits that we feel on ourselves, Lord, that you would reveal them, Lord, put us in situations that we, um, start to see where we either are relying on ourselves or there's a spirit of intimidation. We ask you to reveal it, Lord. We want to walk in the truth. We thank you, Jesus.
Thank you that you want your daughters free, Lord, so that we can set others free. Open our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, ladies, food for thought for you. Ask the Lord, is there a spirit of intimidation um, at operation in your life? And ask him um, to give you the truth. And it's the truth that will set us free. He has been speaking for weeks to me, different scripture. And now it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Okay, have a great day.